from unethical human experiments to animal testing all the way to some of the darkest moments in history, these experiments were all done in the name of science, but at what cost? Welcome back to Bumblebee, I am your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky. Let's dive right into the top 10 shocking experiments in history that changed everything. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Bobby, Eddie, and David. When Bobby Shafran was 19 years old, he found out he had a twin, a brother named Eddie. The two were raised separately because they had been adopted at birth into different households. Not too long after finding out about each other, things took an even crazier twist when Bobby and Eddie found out that they had a triplet, another brother named David. What should have been a very joyous reunion for the triplets turned very dark when they began to uncover the truth about what happened and why they had spent all of those years not knowing the others existed. As it turns out, they found out they were forced to be subjects of an experiment they had no idea was taking place. Peter Neubauer was a child psychiatrist who wanted to study nature versus nurture, but decided to do it in this cruel and unethical way. He believed that twins or triplets had a better chance of thriving if they were separated from their twin, and he wanted to prove this by unknowingly separating twins from each other at birth. Luckily, Bobby, Eddie, and David all found each other, and their story is documented in the movie Three Identical Strangers. In our number nine spot today, we have the Milgram experiment. The premise of this experiment was that they took two groups of people, one called teachers and one called learners, and they paired them up, one from each group. The pair couldn't see each other, but the teacher would ask the learner a question. If the learner got it wrong, the teacher was then told to give them an electric shock. Every question made the shocks get worse until an eventual fatal shock would be administered. Before the experiment, it was proposed that only 3% of the participants would go all of the way and actually give the fatal shock. But it turned out that under pressure, 65% of the teachers actually gave the lethal dose of electricity to their learner counterparts. Luckily, the students were actually just actors, so no one was truly getting hurt or shocked to death in this experiment. But it honestly is very creepy and very disturbing to see these poor people being pushed so far past their boundaries, and it's kind of unsettling to know the results. In our number eight spot today, we have the Hoffling Hospital Experiment. This experiment happened all the way back in 1966, in a time where the rules of psychological experiments were a lot more loosey-goosey. Because of this, the nurses that were all a part of this experiment had no idea that they were participants, which nowadays is very, very illegal. Basically, this experiment took place on the night shift. The night nurse would receive a phone call during the shift, and on the other end would be Dr. Smith, who's actually a researcher. He would ask the nurses to check the medicine cabinet to see if they had a drug called Astrotin, which was actually a drug that was just made up for this experiment, and it was just a placebo. The Astrotin would clearly state the maximum dosage of 10 milligrams, but Dr. Smith would ask the nurses to administer 20 milligrams. They were told that the doctor was in a hurry and he would sign all of the authorization papers as soon as he came in to see the patient later on that night. If the nurse decided to give the patient the drug, they would be breaking three rules. They are not allowed to accept instructions over the phone, the dose was double the maximum limit stated on the box, and the medicine itself was unauthorized. It was not on the ward stock list, so it shouldn't be in use at the hospital. Out of the 22 unknowing nurse participants, 21 of them administered the drug. That's insane. This isn't to say that the nurses were bad people or that they were bad at their job, but this experiment combined with the interviews that happened afterwards just showed how the power imbalance and the social pressures that come along with that can affect the outcome of a workplace extremely drastically, and in this case, it really could have been a matter of life and death. In our number seven spot today, we have the facial expressions experiment. In 1924, a psychologist with the University of Minnesota, Carney Landis, wanted to conduct an experiment to study facial expressions. More specifically, he wanted to to see if everyone's expressions of emotions were the same. Does happiness look the same on everyone? Does sadness, shock, disgust, etc. make us all react the same way facially? An interesting question for sure, but the method was strange. Basically, he recruited some student volunteers and then painted the lines of their facial muscles black. He then exposed each participant to different stimuli in order to photograph their reactions and then, of course, compare the results. This is all fine, except for what the stimuli actually contained. I guess this guy just really wanted big reactions because he included showing them adult films, exposing them to ammonia, making them touch reptiles, and even beheading rats. Apparently, one third of the participants willingly did this beheading when told despite not knowing how to do it humanely, and even if they did know how to do it humanely, 
why would you? And for the two thirds that were regular and did not just behead a rat because a strange man told them to, unfortunately Carney did it for them. I'm not even sure what the results of this experiment were and I have to ask, does it even matter? What an actual nightmare for something that largely just doesn't really have an impact on our lives. In our number six spot today we have telephone cats. Sorry to all the cat people out there, this one isn't going to be for you. In 1929, two scientists at Princeton University wanted to conduct an experiment in order to test how auditory nerves perceive sounds. This is obviously extremely important research, but the way they went about it is very messed up. They took a sedated but alive cat and cut out part of its brain. They then attached one end of a telephone wire to the cat's auditory nerve and the other end to a receiver. When one of these scientists spoke into the cat's ear, the other one could hear it on the other end. This is cool, but most definitely not an excuse to do something so inhumane. There were benefits of this experiment of course, and it is believed that it may have helped lead to the development of cochlear implants, which is of course an incredibly important scientific advancement. The worst part however, while the cat actually survived this experiment, instead of treating it like a king for the rest of its life like it truly deserved, these scientists instead killed it to see if the experiment would still work on a dead cat. It didn't. In our number 5 spot today we have the pit of despair. This experiment was conducted by Henry Harlow and is one of the most controversial on this list. In a sort of mental health study, Henry decided to induce depression in monkeys. He took very young monkeys and separated them from their peers and mothers and put them into isolation in a cage that was called the pit of despair. Sometimes the monkeys would stay there for longer, more extended periods, and other times they would be repeatedly separated and put into the cage for multiple shorter stays. These monkeys all proved to be extremely psychologically disturbed after the conclusion of this experiment, which should have seemed kind of obvious even before the experiment was conducted. These monkeys were used as a model of human clinical depression, but here's where things get even sadder than they already were. These monkeys were unable to be treated and rehabilitated. Despite various forms of treatment, they were just unable to get to a place they would have been had they not have been subject to a cruel experiment. In our number four spot today, we have psychic driving. A part of Project MK Ultra, this experiment was conducted by British psychiatrist Donald E. And Cameron, who created the psychic driving concept that the CIA found interesting. Basically, psychic driving was a procedure that subjects patients to a continuous, repeated audio loop of something that is intended to change their behavior. Basically, the patients would be exposed to hundreds of thousands of repetitions of a singular statement through the course of their treatment, and they would also be subjected to paralytic drugs that would subdue them while being exposed to this looped message. Yeah, so the CIA heard about this idea for a treatment and thought, hmm, that sounds cool. Then they started sending money to fund Cameron's experiments, but he actually didn't know it was coming from the CIA because they used a front. So Cameron's psychic driving experiments for MK Ultra began to take place in Canada. I guess they said that the aim of the experiments were to get rid of or cure someone of schizophrenia by erasing existing memories and reprogramming the psyche. I'm not sure that's how schizophrenia works, but I guess they did. Cameron would subject patients to paralytic drugs and electroconvulsive therapy that was 30 to 40 times the normal power. He would also put the experiment subjects into induced comas while exposing them to the repeated audio. The experiments were mostly conducted on patients who entered the institute for more common problems like anxiety disorders or postpartum depression, and they ended up leaving with permanent effects from his actions. These included things like urinary incontinence, amnesia, being unable to speak. Some people forgot their parents and thought that the interrogators were their parents. It clearly completely altered those who were participating in these horrible and certainly unethical experiments. In our number three spot today, we have the UCLA schizophrenia experiments. Starting in 1983, UCLA researchers Michael Gitlin and Keith Nocherlin went to great and very unethical lengths to see just how people who were suffering from schizophrenia relapse. Basically, they were trying to figure out if there was a way to predict the relapse or a psychosis episode. And this is definitely important work that deserves attention because it could certainly have real world benefits, but that does does not mean unethical lengths should be reached. Unfortunately, this experiment involved recruiting hundreds of participants who were all being treated for schizophrenia and then taking them off of their medication. This alone has some obvious implications for the health of these people, but to make matters worse, there was no suitable plan in place for when they could return to their medication, and they also just didn't do a good enough job making sure that those participating were protected and safe given their very vulnerable state. Unfortunately, the results were disastrous and proved to be fatal when one of the participants 
participants, Antonio La Madrid, ended up taking his own life. In an article from 1994, it also says that the doctors failed to get proper informed consent from the patients as well. In our number two spot today, we have the Tuskegee experiment. In the years between 1932 and 1972, there were 399 black impoverished farmers in Tuskegee, Alabama, who all had syphilis, who were recruited to participate in a free program. They were told that the program would help them treat their ailment, but of course, that never happened. This experiment was conducted by people who were trying to see what would happen if the disease went untreated. Instead of treating the men with penicillin, which was the recommended treatment at the time, the men received aspirin and mineral supplements as placebos. And while this experiment was conducted to try and understand what effect the spread of disease has on the body, the unethical considerations of the scientists who conducted it proved to be absolutely fatal and just downright cruel. Out of the 399, 28 of them passed away from the disease directly, 10 passed away from complications related to the disease, 40 spouses became infected, which was then passed on to 19 others at birth whose parents had been infected. This whole situation truly is one of those times where you stop and wonder how these things were ever treated as acceptable and really just hope that things have changed for the better. In our number one spot today, we have Unit 731. The Imperial Japanese Army's Unit 731 conducted some pretty horrifying experiments during World War II that certainly are shocking to anyone who hears about them. The experiments were meant to be done as a way to prepare for biological warfare, but the process was gruesome and just inhumane. Different medical schools and universities provided doctors and other research staff to help conduct these experiments, and they used both prisoners and civilians as the guinea pigs. There were a bunch of different experiments that were conducted during this time, some of which involved injecting them with pathogens such as plague or cholera or anthrax. Others involved vivisection or operations with no anesthesia, putting them in a pressure chamber to see how much a human can withstand before bursting, or even live weapons testing. It is hard to even believe that this was a real thing that happened, and we honestly can't even begin to imagine what those people were forced to face during that time. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. Yeah,